Okay, uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. For this morning, uh, I will be discussing, oh, this is just a practice problem uh, on algebra. So the date for today is uh, February 5, 2024. So let's proceed. This is a long video format and this will be an exercise problem. Okay, let's proceed. The problem presented uh, this morning will be an example problem on algebra and this falls under the so-called uh, completing the squares on the so-called computation of the roots of a quadratic equation. Okay, let's proceed. The given quadratic equation is a uh, 3x squared plus 4x minus 12 and uh, the problem is asking what will be the roots. It's a quadratic equation, so supposed to be uh, there will be an x sub 1 equal to and there will be an x sub 2 equal to. And to illustrate the solution on how to compute for the roots by using the so-called completing squares, I will be presenting the so-called uh, concept of completing squares. Okay. <coughs> I will rewrite the given quadratic equation 3x squared plus 4x minus 12 equal to 0. Step number one. Uh, we transpose all constant terms to the right. That's the number one step on completing squares. For the first one, I just rewrite it, but the first step is actually to recall this uh, transfer all constant to the right. So it will be a 3x squared plus 4x. Okay, we transpose this to the right, so this will not be plus. That's good. After the transposition, okay will make sure that the coefficient of the square term is uh, unity. So to make the coefficient of the square term unity, uh, we must have to multiply this by one term. Right? So this three here will disappear. The coefficient of x squared now will just be simply x squared. That's a requirement for completing squares. Then we will try to distribute this one term here for x times one third will be four thirds x and the right hand side will be 12 times one third and that will be equal to four. Okay. After making the coefficient of the square term to be unity, we will now try to make the left hand side factorable into a perfect binomial. Um, yeah, a perfect binomial. And to do that, we must have to take one half of the coefficient of x, which is 4 thirds, then we'll square the value. That's the standard procedure. Whatever the coefficient of the, the x, we will take one half value of that, then we will try to square it. So if we try to compute, uh, take the coefficient of x, it's 4 thirds, right? We take one half of it, then we square it. Okay, uh, one half of four thirds quantity square. Actually, we can cancel two over here. So it will just be simply two thirds quantity square. Squaring this, this should now be four over nine. What's the significance of this four over nine here? The significance of this uh, 4 over 9 is that if we try to add 4 over 9 to the left hand side, it will now be factorable to a perfect binomial. So I will rewrite it again. x squared plus 4 third x. As per our computation, the constant to be added on the left for it to be factorable to a perfect binomial is actually 4 over 9. It's 4 over 9. And this should be equal to 4. And since we add 4 over 9 on the left, we add also 4 over 9 to the right to balance the equation. 
right? And at the uh, adding for over nine on the lab, it's now a therapeutic binomial square. This is now factorable to the quantity x plus two thirds quantity square. Because if we try to expand this, uh, it will be an x square plus uh, twice the product of two thirds x plus the square of the last part, which is four over nine. And this is actually x square. This will now be four thirds x plus four over nine. Okay. This is the value of the left hand side after adding four over nine. And like what I said, this is now factorable to the binomial x plus two thirds quantity squared. And for the right hand side, the right hand side are all pure constants, so it's just a matter of simplifying it. Uh, but unluckily, uh, this is a whole number and this fraction, so we must have to combine this one. And to combine this one, we multiply this one, that will be 36 plus 4, all over the common denominator 9. And if we try to simplify this one, this should be 40 over 9. Right? And to compute for x, okay, we must have to eliminate these two here. So we raise this uh, total term here, raised to the one half. The eleven side quantity square raised to the one half, these two here cancel with this. Okay, what will remain will just be simply x plus two thirds. For the right hand side, forty over nine raised to the one half will be the square root of forty. Uh, luckily, 9 is a perfect square, and the square root of 9 is 3. But this should now be plus or minus. Right? The left hand side, uh, left hand side is now just simply x plus 2 thirds. So to compute for x, we transpose this to the right. It will be negative 2 thirds. Right? Plus or minus 2 thirds the square root of 10. And to compute for the value of x1, uh, we will be using the positive sign. Okay, so if we try to use the positive sign, there is two-thirds here, there is two-thirds, so a common factor two-thirds. We, we write this one first, square root of 10. What remains here will be minus 1. So the first value of x is actually two-thirds times the quantity, square root of 10, minus 1, cross quantity. That's the first answer. And actually, if we try to compute this one by using the calculator, the value is 1.4415. For the value of x to the second root, uh, we will be using the negative sign. So there is a negative two thirds here. This will now be negative two thirds the square root of 10. Uh, they are both negative. Okay, so we factor out that negative two thirds. So what remains inside will now be square root of 10 plus 1. And if we try to compute for the approximate value of this, it's a negative 2.7748. And if we try to check the validity of our answer, I uh, will get this value here. I checked this one uh, by using the calculator. I took the value 1.4415. I substitute here. What comes out is, uh, is 0 is equal to 0. For the second one, it's the same. It's still uh, 0 is equal to zero. So the correct answers are actually two-thirds times the quantity square root of 10 minus 1 and minus two-thirds times the quantity square root of 10 plus 1. Okay, uh, that's it guys. Uh, that's the way how to uh, compute for the roads of a quadratic equation by completing squares. And I think uh, this will be a good example problem for, for those of you who are uh, trying to familiarize yourselves with Algebra. Okay, uh, good morning from Los Angeles. Professor De Beji de Los Reyes. Okay, uh, my channel is at youtube.com slash at prof de Beji de Los Reyes. If you want to sh share it, please click share. Good morning from Los Angeles.